Hello dear students. Welcome back to my science class. Today I am going to teach you a very important topic that is chemical effects of electric current. You are watching the channel Learn Science with Moon Moon Ma'am. Electricity and Charges To understand electricity and related terms, it is important to understand what charges are. The charges that carry electricity are present in basic unit of matter that is in atoms. Atoms contain three subatomic particles, namely electrons that are negatively charged and move around the nucleus, protons that are positively charged and neutrons that are neutral in charge are present inside the nucleus. Number of proton is equal to number of electrons, so an atom is electrically neutral. Here you can see structure of atom, right? Inside the nucleus, there are positively charged proton and neutral neutron. Surrounding the nucleus, electrons revolve around some fixed orbits. Now in an atom, number of protons are equal to number of electrons. That means number of positive charge is equal to number of negative charge. As here it is showing 6 protons, 6 neutrons and you can see 6 electrons are there. So, an atom is electrically neutral. Conductors and insulators. All metallic elements are free electrons in their outermost orbit. Children, I repeat, all metallic elements having free electrons in their outermost orbit. So, they can transfer these electrons from one atom to another. An electric current is set up when these free electrons move from one atom to another. Conductor are substances which allow electricity to pass through them like silver, gold, etc. Insulator substances which do not allow electric current to pass through them like plastic, rubber, etc. Nowadays, other than using the term conductor or insulator, better we will use the term good conductor and poor conductor. Because certain insulators in some specific condition become good conductor of electricity. So, better we are using the term good conductors and poor conductors. Similar to many solids, some liquid also conduct electricity. A liquid with a good conductivity is called electrolyte. This is a term you have to remember. Later, we will use the term electrolyte for the liquid which is a good conductor of electricity. And the one which is incapable of conducting electricity is non-electrolyte. Here is a list. Just take a look, some strong electrolytes are there that are very good conductor of electricity. Liquids that are very good conductor of electricity like hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, perchloric acid, sulfuric acid, sodium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, ionic compounds. Some weak electrolytes listed there and some non-electrolytes. Weak electrolytes you can see here, weak bases, right? Weak acid, acetic acid is a weak acid, hydrogen fluoride, ammonia, water, right? And non-electrolyte you can see in the list, urea, methane, ethanol, glucose, sucrose, these are all non-electrolyte. They cannot, I mean solution of them cannot conduct electricity. Conduction tester. Now we want to know whether a given solution can conduct electricity or not or whether a given substance can conduct electricity or not. For that we need a tester that is known as conduction tester. See a conduction tester is a device used to determine whether a substance is a good or poor conductor of electricity. A simple conduction tester has an electric cell and a torch bulb. One terminal of the cell is connected to one terminal of the bulb by a wire and the other terminal of the cell and bulb have wire which can be brought in contact with the material to test whether they are good or poor conductor of electricity. This you know, just uh, if the material is a good conductor, the bulb glows. If it is a poor conductor, the bulb does not glow. Just take a look, this one, we have um, battery cell and this is uh, connected with the wire, 
we have a bulb with it now we will dip this into some solutions we want to test whether it is a good conductor or poor conductor or we can attach it with any material wood plastic metals anything if the bulb is glowing that means it's a good conductor if not it's a poor conductor so this is our conduction tester if the bulb lights up it means the material allows electric current to flow through the closed circuit the brighter the bulb the better the conductor of the electricity is the material just take a look we have attached is with a pin or a iron nail and we can see that the bulb is glowing so iron nail is a good conductor so that is uh, how we can use our conduction tester Conduction tester using lead and magnetic compass. Now we have used bulb in our previous experiments. But bulb needs a specific amount of electric current to pass through at the circuit. That will make the filament hot and it will glow. Now if weak electric current is passing through the circuit that is not enough for the bulb to glow it will not show us that whether electric current is flowing through it or not. So what we can do? Sometimes the current flowing through the circuit may be too weak and the filament of the bulb may not get sufficiently heated to make it glow. Then instead of a torch bulb and lead can be used in the circuit. Lead glows even when a weak electric current flows through the circuit. So if we want to test whether weak electric current flowing through the circuit or not, we can use a lead like this. You see the longer wire is attached with the positive terminal and the shorter one attached with the negative terminal. This tester we can use even to test weak electric current is passing through the circuit. Another way to check weak electric current is passing through the circuit that is a magnetic compass is kept near a wire and current flows through the wire. The magnetic needle get deflected. So we can use a magnetic compass instead of a torch bulb or laid in the circuit. The magnetic needle gets deflected even if a weak electric current flows through the circuit. So this is another way we can test weak electric current is flowing through the circuit or not. Because we know whenever electric current flows through the circuit, small magnetic fields created. So if the magnet is kept, Inside that magnetic field, definitely the magnetic needle will deflect and deflection of the magnetic needle will tell us that yes, weak electric current is flowing through the circuit. Now, we will know some important terminologies. What are those? First, conventional current. The flow of current in a circuit from the positive terminal to the negative terminal of the source. This we know that when we make a circuit, always electric current flows from the positive terminal of the cell to the negative terminal. This is conventional current. Next is electrolysis. The process of passing electric current through a liquid to bring about a chemical change. That is electrolysis. Electrode, a solid conductor through which electric current enters or leaves an electrolytic cell. This is electrode. There are two type of electrode. One is anode. The electrode connected to the positive terminal of the battery is known as anode. The electrode that is connected to the negative terminal of the battery is known as cathode. And electrolytic cell. This is a device containing two electrodes in contact with an electrolyte. If you can remember, electrolyte is a liquid that is capable of conducting electric current. That brings about a chemical reaction when connected to a battery. So the entire arrangement is electrolytic cell that contain cathode, anode and electrolyte which is attached with a battery. So these are some of the important terminologies. These are the terms that we will use in our later part of the video. Now we will see electrolysis of water. 
electrolysis of water. First, we will analyze it. When electric current is passed through water, it splits up into hydrogen and oxygen. So, lysis of water with the help of electric current is called electrolysis of water. When electric current is passed through water, oxygen gas bubbles are produced at the electrode connected to the positive terminal of the battery and hydrogen gas bubbles are produced at the electrode that are connected to the negative terminal of the battery. Reaction as cathode, we will discuss about this later. So, see two hydrogen ion liberating two electron and producing hydrogen gas. Reaction that happens in anode, production of oxygen gas. So, at cathode, hydrogen gas is producing, anode, oxygen gas is producing. This AQ, that means it is aqueous, G denotes gas and L denotes liquid. English scientist William Nicholson and Anthony Carlisle were the first ones to electrolyze water successfully in 1806. So now take a look at electrolysis of water. See this entire arrangement we can tell it is uh, an electrolytic cell. Okay, One which is attached with the positive terminal of the battery is anode. One which is attached with the negative terminal of the battery is cathode. So, anode is a positive electrode, cathode is the negative electrode. On electrolysis of water, we have to add little amount of water, uh, acid in, with the distilled water to make it uh, electrolyte. Now, we will see that oxygen gas is generated at anode that is the positive electrode and hydrogen is liberated cathode that is the negative electrode. Now take a look at the reaction. Reaction of cathode. Hydrogen ion that is positively charged. So hydrogen ion is attracted towards the negative electrode cathode right and liberate hydrogen gas. The reaction that is taking place anode that liberate oxygen gas O minus we know negatively charged. So that is coming to the positive electrode and oxygen gas is liberated here. So electrolysis of water generate hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Now another electrolysis I will show you to make your concept even more clear that is electrolysis of copper sulphate. Here we have taken copper sulphate as electrolyte. The diagram for the electrolysis of copper 2 sulphate solution E2, this 2 is denoting that the valency of copper is 2 that means CuSO4. Okay. So copper sulphate solution with carbon electrodes. Here we have taken two carbon electrodes. Right. One which is attached with the positive terminal that is anode and one which is attached with the negative terminal that is cathode. Now on electrolysis of copper sulphate it is dissociates into copper Cu2 plus ion and sulphate SO4 2 minus ion and water also dissociate into H plus and OH minus. Now on electrolysis, deposit of copper metal on electrode surface. Copper metal positively charged definitely will be attracted towards negative electrode, cathode and deposited over there. Positive ions are attracted to the negative electrode, gain electrons so are reduced and this is a reduction reaction. And take a look at the positive electrode or anode. The negatively charged hydroxyl ion and sulphate ion, they are attracted towards it. Liberation of oxygen gas, bubbles on the surface, electrolyte of dilute copper sulphate solution and negative ions are attracted to the positive electrode, lose electron and this is oxidation reaction. So, this is electrolysis of copper sulphate. Copper sulphate dissociates into copper and sulphate. Positive ions are attracted towards negative electrode. Negative ions are attracted towards positive electrode. 
electroplating this is the application of chemical effect of electric current electroplating is general name for the process that create metal coating on a solid substrate through the reduction of cations of that metal by means of a direct electric current the part to be coated act as cathode that is negative electrode of an electrolytic cell and the electrolyte is a solution of salt or metal to be coated and the anode or positive electrode is usually either a block of that metal or of some inert conductive material the current is provided by an external power supply like battery or cell so simply during electroplating also we need electrolyte that is the liquid that able to conduct electricity we need cathode and we usually choose cathode that that the substance on which actually we want uh, electroplating and another one is anode electroplating what are the uses is widely used in industry and decorative arts to improve the surface qualities of object such as resistance to abrasion and corrosion lubricity reflectivity electrical conductivity or appearance it may also be used to build up thickness on undersized of worn out parts or to manufacture metal plates with complex shape a process called electro forming it is also used to purify metals such as copper take a look at the process here we are doing electroplating we have iron that is uh, attached to the negative terminal because we want that iron to be electroplated with which we want it to be electroplated with silver ag argentum that is why we are using silver in the anode and we want iron plate to be electroplated so we are choosing it as cathode and we have taken silver nitrate solution just take a look that silver being positively charged or attracted towards the negative electrode that is cathode that is made up of iron on which we want electroplating to be done and deposited on it end of this process we will see that a coat of silver over iron that is electroplating this is a very beautiful application of chemical effect of electric current hope you have understand the process thank you